Hello and thank you for joining us today. Today is going to be our final tutorial before Christmas. Uh, we have a little break from filming over the Christmas period, so Alyssa and I can have a little break from it. Uh, the next tutorial after today will be going out on Friday the 8th of January. Uh, so hopefully we'll be getting a fun-filled uh, tutorial for you then and for the future weeks uh, to come. Uh, I've got a lot to fill you in with today, so uh, I'm going to press on and show you um, a technique to start with, and then at the end of the tutorial, I'll be showing you something else as well. So today, I'm going to show you how you can create, um, it's a plique, whether you want to call it reflection or mirror imaging. Um, it's a really, really fun technique to do. So I've just done a few little samples here for you to see, uh, because when you do them, you actually get uh, two mirror images. If I can actually get it into the uh, focus there. So, and I'm just going to show you. There's lots and there's many, many designs you can do. Uh, this one I've actually done on the diagonal but you can do them so they're actually just uh, centralized on a square as well. Uh, many, many things you can do. You do have to be careful um, uh, if you're doing something like a cat, because uh, what you might not want is um, one cat that has two tails and another cat that has none at all. So just be very wary um, if it's not symmetrical you may want to add um, detail at the end of it. Um, so I'm just uh, showing you a few uh, different designs here that I've done. And I'm going to show you how you can design and create these yourself. You don't have to be a mastermind at drawing or anything like that. Um, you can use images um, off of uh, birthday cards, uh, colouring pages, the internet, there's lots and lots of these shapes that are free downloadable shapes. However, um, we do need to make some adjustments to these shapes because if we just use the shape as it is, because we would be putting a seam into it, it would actually distort the design. Now, if you can see this heart, this is the template that I used to actually make this design. And if I lay the template on there, I'm hoping that you can see here that it doesn't fit anymore. So therefore, you've lost a lot of the shaping here, okay? However, I will show you how to make that adjustment so that when you do the applique with the new style template you've made, now your template brings it back to the original design you started with, the original size, so you've got no distortion or anything. Um, and let's show you how we obtain that look. So, first of all, what we want to do is to find an image. And I'll show you two different ways of doing this. So if this is the original image that you have, okay, and it's actually printed, what we need to do is we need to insert half an inch down the center of it. So what we're going to do is Take a piece of paper, like so, and we're going to draw a line, not quite in the centre. Well, actually, I'll, I'll draw the first line in the centre. It might make it easier for you to see. So I've done a red line there for you to see. Now we need to draw a line a quarter of an inch either side of this. And this uh, allows for our seam allowance. So all I'm going to use, I am actually uh, using my 
uh, on a uh, creative grids ruler because the quarter of an inch lines are absolutely perfect. If you do do this, just remember to clean the edge of your ruler afterwards, okay? Just with a wet wipe or, or soapy water. I'm just gonna turn that round and do one on the opposite side as well, using the red center line so I can just draw another line, like so. And then what I want is I want another line a little way up so that I can have a base to work from as well. Okay. So there's different ways we can do this. If I had, if I'd already drew this up, okay, uh, and I had a template, here's my little heart template, not, here we go. If I had a template like this to draw around, all I would need to do is place the half centre line on one of the outer lines, okay? And what I'm doing, I'm using the horizontal line across here to put the point, the base of the image on. It doesn't matter whether it's a flat base or anything, okay? And I'm just going to draw around half the way to the outside line, okay? So if I just hold that up, I'm hoping you can see that. Now I'm going to move the template to the opposite side and I'm going to place that on the other outside drawn line. And I'm going to take that around like so. So now we have a heart that's not joined in the middle. Now, I tend to actually take these lines down. If you go straight the way across here, that's absolutely fine if you can guarantee your sewing machine is a good, accurate quarter of an inch foot. If it isn't, you'll get a step in the middle of it. So I tend to take these lines down. And I have a little ruler here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going onto the end of my little drawn line there. So I've taken that down to my center red line. And I'm now going to join the other one up with it. Like so. And I'm going to do exactly the same with the other one at the bottom. So I'll bring it right the way down. To the point. What we've done now is we've now added the quarter of an inch seam allowance that we're going to use for both sides of the fabric. Now that's if you've got a template that you can actually draw around. If you don't have that, if you have just an image like this, um, you can use a light box. If you don't have a light box, just um, use a, a window or a door when it's lighter outside. I'm hoping this is not going to glare too much once I switch this on. Okay, so now I've got my heart shape uh, piece on the piece of paper on my light box. And what I'm going to do now is use exactly the same piece of paper uh, that I drew up before with the lines. And I'm now going to place it so I can see through the paper. And I'm positioning it so that I've got, once again, the centre of the heart. Just take a pencil. I've got the centre of the heart on the outside line to the right hand side. I'm just going to very quickly just draw around this. So this is two different ways that you can achieve exactly the same thing. Okay, 
And now I'm going to slide that top piece of paper over. And because I've got the horizontal line, it means I'm keeping everything in line with itself. So now I can just draw around the image on the left hand side. And that now has given us exactly the same outcome as we had the first time. And once again, what I'd need to do was just extend these lines down to that center line. And that then has once again added our quarter of an inch seam allowance. Sorry, it looks like I'm a bit of a ghost without putting on. So I'm, oops, I'm just going to remove that. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Okay, so now we have the shape that we want to draw onto our bonder web, okay, or whatever fusible um, uh, adhesive that you prefer to use. I tend to use bonder web, um, I find it works really, really well, doesn't make the um, applique too stiff or anything, it's really nice to handle. So now all that remains to do is to actually uh, place the bonder web on top of the image and draw around it. Okay, so the bonder web, the bumpy side is the glue side, the smooth side is like the grease proof paper, so it's the smooth side that you draw on. So ahead of time, I've already actually placed this on a heart that I prepared earlier and drew around it. Uh, once you've got that done, do not cut it out on the line. You need to uh, have a margin at least a quarter of an inch all the way around it, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to adhere this to the wrong side of a piece of fabric, okay? Um, if you want to select a, a, a particular image on the fabric, uh, then you can do so because you can actually see through uh, the bonder web, um, absolutely fine so you might want to sort of centralize anything on there although the center the actual center half an inch panel right the way down the middle you'll be losing because that will go into the seam allowance so all i've done now i've just pressed that onto the wrong side of a piece of fabric so what you need to do now is wait for this to cool down completely uh, I would advise you not to start cutting it out whilst it's still warm. Uh, the reason I say that is because whilst it's still warm, the glue hasn't set. If you start cutting it, not only you, do you stand the risk of the fabric actually starting to fray, you will also transfer some of the warm glue onto the blades of your scissors, uh, which actually could damage your scissors. It means they're not quite as sharp and it takes a little bit of cleaning up to get them right. So for the sake of two minutes, that is absolutely cold now. So now I could actually just go ahead and actually uh, just cut that out. Okay, so we'll just set that aside. Um, I've already done that once again in advance. Thank you, Alicia. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how we're going to make two squares with the mirror image reflection of the So I'll just set my board. Now you can do uh, whatever size you want to. If you want to finish up with a 10 inch square, I personally would cut my fabric 11 inches because I like to trim everything back to make sure I've got everything central. And that just gives me enough wiggle room to be able to do that. So once again, ahead of time, I've already cut myself out two pieces of fabric, contrasting fabric, okay, and I've cut these 11 inches square. I've also, once again, cut out the heart shape already. So these are the hearts that I've cut out already. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take, first of all, I take the darker square, Okay, and we're going to, I, I'll do this diagonal because I want to show you how you can trim it up so everything's absolutely accurate. So I'm going to fold that in half 
right sides together because what we want we want a valley where it's been pressed and not a mountain otherwise the um the heart applique would pivot on the top and it wouldn't be as accurate so i'm just going to give that a little press along the diagonal line and i've got my fabrics placed right sides together okay i'll also do this one and what i've done i've purposely left um, that uh, what which is now a triangle uh, left as it is as I pressed it because it's the cooling process that will actually make the crease stay crisper if I open it up then you will see a mark but it won't be as strong so whilst I've pressed this one this one has now cooled down okay so I'll just leave that there for a second now what I'm going to do I've got my hearts cut out uh, in the two contrasting colours. But what I need to do is I want to make sure they're the same size. Now they should be, but sometimes we've got a little bit carried away when we cut in. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to place these hearts on top of each other. And it doesn't matter about any of the outside edges. The only part I'm concerned about is the centre. So I'm just lining up this little piece here to make sure these are situated nicely. And I'm also going to level up the bottom edge because I want these to actually fit nicely. And if they weren't fitting quite nicely, I would take a pair of scissors and I would just trim them to make sure they're all sitting nicely. Now these are okay, um, I did them earlier, but they're not always okay, and that's absolutely fine. So just tidy them up and make sure they sit on the same. So what we want to do now is we're going to take, if I use the dark square of fabric, I'm going to use the opposite, the light heart. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold the heart right sides together in half, I prefer to do it before I remove the backing fabric. Uh, the, sorry, the, um, the backing of the uh, bonder web, okay? And just give it a nice crisp press, okay? And now what I've done, I now know that this will be nice and easy for me to situate uh, in this area here. So I'll just move this over so the camera can pick it up nicely. So this is the square that we folded in half. So I'm going to open it up and I've got an indentation here, uh, which is like the valley uh, where we ironed it. And all I'm going to do now, I'm going to remove the wrong side of the bonder web. Do not pick away at the edges. This is how you encourage it to fray. Just get a pin, a needle, anything. Just swipe it straight the way across. And just remove like so now because i've already finger pressed this this is actually now going to sit in the valley really nicely but because we want to mirror image it with this one we need to make sure that we've got them in a similar position we don't want to put this one down here and on the opposite one put the other one up here otherwise they're not going to meet up so we can situate that just in the center, like so. And you can take a rule, you can take anything. I just happen to have with me a Dresden plate ruler. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to position the ruler at the base and decide where I want my heart situated. So I'm gonna put my four and a half inch line right on the corner there. And I'm going to just butt up the bottom point of the heart to the ruler and just check that it's sitting in the crease line. And that's all sitting beautifully. So that was the four and a half inch from the bottom I've done. And all I'm going to do, I'm just going to press. Okay. And once it's adhered, you can then just move it around. Okay. I then to really need to repeat exactly the same again with this one. So once again, fold it in half, crease, swipe, and 
And with the bond web, open the square up, and you can see probably better in the lighter one than you could the darker one, the indentation. So if I take my ruler once again, place my four and a half inch mark at the bottom, place the point at the bottom, all sitting in the crease line. And because it's indented, it just sits in there beautifully. And just give that a press. There we go. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is now cut uh, these blocks. How are we going to do that? It's just going to take a ruler, a rotary cutter. And what I'm going to do, it doesn't matter about these corners. Completely ignore the square. The area that you need to be looking at is the centre of your applique. So here and here. And it's very easy to pick up. Don't worry about this bit at all. That's why we've added wiggle room into it. Okay, so I'm going to place the ruler on there. So, and cut. I'll just quickly set that to one side. I'm going to take the second one and I'm going to do exactly the same again. Re remember, all I'm doing is looking at the heart and not the square. Right, so now this is what we have. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to pair them up. So if you can see, we have this one. And we're going to pair this up with this half. And as you can see, they fit beautifully. So all we need to do now is actually pin these together, okay? And to do that, you only need two pins. So if you just basically just eyeball a quarter of an inch in and pin it to the edge of where the bond web is basically, the edge of the shaping, just here, okay? And then you're going to take it straight in the other one and do exactly the same. And I like to push it right down because when I sew, I know I want to go directly through where the pin has actually gone into my fabric. That's why we want to do a, a quarter of an inch down. And take another pin and do exactly the same at the other end. Okay. So we're going to go in here and then once again in you can see, I'm hoping you can see if the camera's picking this up, where that pin is, like so. Now all you need to do is take this to the sewing machine and you'll sew straight the way down, okay? So, this is one that I actually sewn earlier. And what I did with this, I was very, very careful. I eased my pins out. Now, normally, uh, when I do it, I will actually, when I get to just before the pin, I will take it out. But I wanted to leave this as it is, so you can see that uh, where the pins were. So that's where the pins were. So now all we need to do is open it up and reveal what we've made. So I'm going to remove these pins. Now, this is a part that I actually really enjoy doing. I've got it right way around. Okay. So when you press this, hopefully, this is what you will see. So I press this seam open because it eliminates the bulk. It disperses it to both sides. And this is something that I personally wouldn't be stitching in the ditch. So that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to open that up and as I press this all the way up, like so, I'm 
this is exactly what you should be seeing. Because of the way we pinned it, okay, okay. Can you see here? This is where you've joined it, okay? And exactly the same at the other end. So now, if we turn this over, I don't even know which way up it is. There we go. So if we turn this over, and once again, press this from this side, I'm hoping you can see now that you've got a really good joining and you have got a perfect match with a mirror image. The other thing that I'd like to show you is actually now how to trim this up. What I would do now, I would actually now stitch this around, okay? You can stitch this around. I personally like a blanket stitch. I had some of the samples I showed you earlier. I've got satin stitch or a straight stitch or a fancy stitch. You can use the same colored thread all the way around. On something like this, on um, one of them that I did, I've used a cream on this side and I've used a toffee colour on this side. You can use variegated, you can do whatever you want. If you like to hand stitch, there's nothing, no reason why you can't just do a nice little hand stitch over it, which again looks really, really pretty. I have had ladies do that before. So what we want to do now is we want to square this up to make sure we centralise it. Uh, to make sure the other one is absolutely in the same place. So all we're going to do now is we're going to take the square ruler, okay, and what we want to do is decide, so if I'm going to trim this up to 10 inches square, I need to see, yes, I've got plenty of fabric here on all four sides. So I'm going to choose um, a particular part that I want. So I'm going to do it two and three quarter inches to the bottom point of the heart. And I'm situating the diagonal line on my ruler right the way down. So two and three quarter inches, which means it will be exactly the same on the other one. And then all of the blocks would be uniform. But remember, I do actually tend to um, stitch this normally all the way around. Um, before I trim it. I'm only doing this so that I can share with you how to actually do it. Now if I situate the ten and a half inch line both vertically here and horizontally at the bottom it's now situating that line right the way up. And there is how you can actually design and make your own image, okay? So that's how you can do your applique reflections. So what I'd like to share with you now is something else that I've been making. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk you through Aquilo. So I'm just very quickly going to pop all these on here and hopefully Alicia can take these from me. Scoot everything away. Thank you, Alicia. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. So, get rid of that as well. So, over here, excuse me, I'm just going to pop that there to make sure everything stays nice and safe. So for those of you that don't know what a quillow is, this is a quillow, okay? It looks like a cushion, really, really easy to make. It can be any design on here you want, to, want it to be. It can be star, it can be anything, just a charm pack, layer cake, anything, doesn't matter. And Practically any quilt you make can be turned into a quillow as long as you actually allow um, the right measurements. So that is a quillow. What happens is you turn it inside out and hey ho, 
we now have a beautiful practical quilt. These are really, really good for traveling. Uh, they're brilliant in cars, caravans, going on holidays, long journeys, so, so good. But the other thing that I've used them for quite a lot, and I've taught this in my classes, and a lot of the ladies have taken this on board as well, because you can make these more or less what size you want. So the part of it that makes it in the quillow is this piece here. It's like half a cushion sewn on the back, and I'm going to show you how to position that. But what I use it for is these are brilliant for uh, people um, that may be in wheelchairs. Because if you make the cushion part of it big enough, you can actually, as long as they're not wearing dirty shoes or anything, you can actually put their feet in. And believe me, it's, it actually saves a lot of drafts around the bottom ends of your legs. Uh, I was in a wheelchair uh, three years ago and uh, found out that I got terribly, terribly cold calves on my legs. So this is something uh, that I use myself and I've passed on this and I've got a lot of my ladies actually um, do them as well. Now, the way to do uh, a quillow, thank you, Alicia. This is a, a te the technique that I have just um, shown you how to do. And Delicia has very kindly uh, offered to help. So this is just a few different designs that I've created, particularly for this um, quillow that I'm doing. This is quite a big one, and this is what I wanted it to be, okay? So whatever the width of your finished quilt, you need to make the pillow uh, larger than a, than a third of the size, okay? So, this has already had the quilt made and it's been quilted. Now, because this is for somebody in a wheelchair, I am putting the pillow at the bottom of the quilt, okay? So, to make the actual pillow, you're just going to make very much like the front of a cushion, okay? But if I hold it this way round, you might be able to see. You only bind it on three sides, okay? So it's bound just on three sides. So for instance, um, if you have a, a quilt measuring 55 inches, okay, there's no point doing um, a this part of the cushion, just a third of it, because it takes up space to fold into it, okay? So you need to allow um, an extra, at least two inches for it to be folded comfortably. So once you've actually quilted your quilt, now I've purposely started to put a binding on, but, and the reason I've done that is to remind you not to put a binding all the way around. So all you would do, it was you take the wrong side of the quilt, okay, you would fold it in half, and can I have a pin please, this here? That's lovely, thank you. And you would find the centre point, like so. So this is, on this occasion, I'm using the bottom end of it because I want this to be somewhere that somebody can put their feet inside. This particular person um, doesn't wear shoes or anything, okay? So I found the center point of where I'm going to put my um, pillow. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the center point of the edge that hasn't got the binding on it because this is going to be in the binding that goes on your quilt. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is position that on the back of the quilt with the back of the pillow facing up. Not the right side of the pillow, the wrong side of the pillow. And all you're going to do then, now my hand stitching wouldn't be strong enough, so um, I like to machine them because they're nice and strong. 
but all you're going to do is actually machine two sides. So you're going to do down one side and down the other. If you want to just do a little stitch along there, you can, but only do a very scant quarter of an inch because you don't want that stitch showing. This bottom edge here will be left open, okay? Because that's what we're going to fold the quilt into. Okay, so I'll just scoot that off to one side. And I will show you now how to fold the quillow. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> right, okay. So here you can see we have the quillow. Right, so this is the quillow and this is the open edge. This has now all been bound all the way along, just like you would a normal quilt, no difference whatsoever. Okay, so I like to start with the quilt facing uppermost. So the right side of the quilt facing up. And you will fold it into the center. And once again, you will fold this over. And this is, the, this is what we want. We don't want this edge to meet here. Otherwise, it makes it very, very bulky. And all I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the bottom edge, I'm going to fold it up towards the bottom edge here, if you can see it. And then I'm going to fold it once again, like so. All I'm going to do now, this is the opening. I'm going to reach my hand inside. I'm going to grab that corner and just pull it through, like so. And that will just go through. And just pop and push those corners out and hey ho there's your quillow if somebody's got this in a wheelchair they tend to sit with this behind their back or actually sit on it so it's not something you've got to carry around with you and it's very practical when it gets cold just open it up and you're okay so we really hope you've enjoyed the tutorial since we've been doing them we are going to be carrying them on from the 8th of january we wish you all a very, very happy Christmas. From myself, Alicia, and all the Brabble Babes, stay safe, have a lovely Christmas, look after yourselves, and take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now.